Hey, and welcome back. It's Professor Hendricks. Today I'd like to talk about finding the longest open reading frame. So, given an RNA sequence, how do you go about finding the longest open reading frame? Let me tell you what I mean by that. An open reading frame is defined by having an AUG and then having some multiple of three characters and then a trinucleotide that matches the stop codon. So this can be either UAA, UAG, or UGA. It's important to note that there can be no trinucleotides that match the stop codon in the intervening sequence that are in frame with and downstream of the AUG and before the stop codon. So there can be no stop codons in this reading frame here as defined by this color-coded series of triplets. And so those are the things we want to work out and we want to find the longest one. So all the tools that we've been building up up until now, um, lists and sorting and regular expressions, they're all building up towards this yeah, script. So let's simply create a script in Emacs, find longest orf.py. And I'm going to just go ahead and enter. And I actually have an RNA sequence that I created, copied it earlier. So I'm going to basically write what's going to be sort of like the template for how this the main function is going to go or the main section of this program is going to go. And so essentially what I want to do is I want to get a sequence. And I'll, I'll just call it ORF. And that's going to be the output of a subroutine called final line ORF. I'll just call it the same name as the script. And I will just print some sort of result, and the longest ORF is, and then comma ORF. Okay, fine. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to start simple. I'm going to work up and build this up. And I'm going to print stuff out as I go just so that you can see what's happening. So the first thing I want to do then is, is then define my subroutine. I'm just going to use the def keyword to indicate the beginning of that control structure, the subroutine control structure, find longest ORF. Okay. And RNA is there. And maybe I want to initially scan for AUGs. So perhaps maybe I want to do this. In other words, if it doesn't have an AUG, don't even bother. Just exit. You know, just um, return an empty string at that point. And the other thing I might want to do is I might want to then scan for all occurrences of that AUG. And so the best way to do that is with find iter. So if you want to use find iter, that's part of the um, RE module. We're going to, uh, it's part of the RE for regular expression module. So we want to import that. And then here we want to loop through all the possible AEGs. So you want to say for, I'll call it start match in re.find iter of some pattern and RNA. And that pattern is just the AEG. So AEG. So there it is. And simply also want to put the colon at the end of the for loop. And then at this point, we have our subsequence that begins at an AUG and would go potentially um, to a, a trinucleotide that matches the stop codon of one exists. And so let's do this. Let's define a substring called remaining. And we'll just do RNA of start match dot start. And so that should be the first position of the AUG match is indicated by this, this right here. And this colon is to remind you that I'm doing a sub, uh, sub string. And the, they, I'm, not putting, I'm not specifying an end position because I want to go to the end of the sequence. I want to print the remaining sequence. So let's just print it out. And so this will give us a sense visually of what's going on. So I'll just type Python finalist orf. And so there you have it. I have several um, possible open reading frames here that seem valid. Okay, so I am going to go back into Emacs and that is really interesting. So I haven't done any sort of check for stop codons. So these are, you know, basically every AUG and going up to the end of the sequence and just to point out, you can see that they all, the way, they all go to the end of the sequence because they have the same end. This A-G-G-C-A is the end of all of them. So they all go all the way to the end of the sequence. And you also notice that this print statement just printed none because I didn't actually return anything from this function yet. Okay, so now that I know that I've got what my remaining sequences look like, I want to search for possible stop codons for trinucleotides that match the stop codon. So UGA, UAA, or UAG. So I want to say for 
stop match in re.find iter of some regular expression and the remaining sequence. At this point, I'm going to search for the remaining because I'm, I'm narrowing my search. And now I want to define that regular expression. So the way we search for three possibilities or multiple possibilities is, or the way I do it, is with a vertical bar, a pipe, indicating OR. So it's UAA or UGA or UAG. And so this vertical bar is a common symbol in a lot of Linux, uh, Unix type situations. Um, but here it means OR. It means that this expression or this expression or this expression are all valid. And then I want to put my colon here to indicate that it's part of the for loop. And let's just print the uh, subsequence. So I'll just say sub string equals RNA of, or actually remaining of colon stop match dot stop. So now, or end, end, end. So now what I'm doing is I'm saying, start at the beginning of this remaining sequence and go up to, but not including the value indicated by end, but because of the way re.finditer works, that end position will be actually one more than the last index of the match as consistent with Python substrings. So I'll print this out. See how this works. And there you have it. So all of these, quite a lot for such a small sequence, but all of these match that. They have an AUG followed by a UGA, but what's missing is I haven't done anything to restrict, to make sure that these are triplets, that the, that the length in between here is a multiple of three. So let's take a look at that. So now that we've got our substrings, um, at this point we want to say, is it a multiple of three? If it's a multiple of three, then it's a possible open reading frame and we want to investigate it further. So I will, I will do an if statement. So I'll say if the len of substring. And so the way we can check if it's a multiple of three is with the remainder operator, the percent sign. And so I can say if len uh, percent three, sometimes people say mod three, but I've also read that, that this percent remainder operator is not technically a modulo operator. So I try to avoid that. So I'll just call it the remainder operator. So at this point, if it passes this if statement, then it must be a potential open reading frame in the sense that it's a multiple of three. And so all these have the property that they're a multiple of three. And actually there's quite a few. In this instance, there's, um, looks like uh, five of them. So that's, you know, a fair amount for a small sequence here. Kind of goes to show you how many, you can pack in quite a few open reading frames in a transcript. Um, the question is which one will actually be translated. And often, very often, it's the longest one. So now at this point, I have a sequence that matches all the criteria. So I want to get the longest one. Now, there's a couple ways you could do this. And for, for better or worse, I will create a list and I will append all these potential instances to a list and I'll sort that list and I will return the longest one. So I'll just define my list and I'll just call it ORFs, plural. And here, if it's here, if we get to this point, I can append it. I can append it to my list and it's a substring and that is a potential valid open reading frame. However, here's one caveat. It is possible that at this point with this for loop, I could find multiple trinucleotides that match the stop codon in frame width and downstream this UAG. But I want to stop at the first one because I said before, there can be no intervening matches to the stop codon in between your AUG and your, your putative stop codon. That's also in frame width the AUG. So once we find the first one that's in frame with the AUG, we have to stop. We basically have to exit that stop match for loop. And the way we do that is with break. So break is a special keyword that will exit the innermost for loop. In this instance, this is the innermost for loop. And um, it would simply exit that. It would not exit the start match search. So it's certainly possible that we can find a trinucleotide that matches the stop codon that's not in frame. 
And this length condition would check that. And it would keep searching until it finds the first one that's in frame and then store it in this list. Okay, so all those pieces are pretty important. And so now what I would like to do is just out of, an, out of a precaution here, I'm gonna print out the ORFs. And you notice how I went, and so there is, there's my list. And I printed it out and notice that I indented all the way back flush with the beginning of the script because I want this analysis of this list to take place completely outside all these for loops after I've scanned everything and stored all the possible valid open reading frames. So now I've got my ORFs and the best thing to do is to sort this list. And so, and I want to sort it in, I want to sort it in descending order. So recall that the default behavior of Python sort is to sort in ascending order. And furthermore, I want to remind you, if I just did orfs.sort, that would sort in alphabetical order by default. So we have to specify the key that we want to sort it with. And the way you specify a key is by using the name of a function, just the name of the function. So we can say key equals len, and so len is the name of the function we want to use. We want to sort these ORFs by their length. Let's just see what happens. Okay, I'm just going to print the ORFs here. I know what's going to happen because the behavior of Python is to sort in ascending order. So now I've got these, these basically sorted smallest to largest. But depending upon how you want to do this, I could at this point simply return the last element of this list. That's, I guess, valid. I could do ORFs of minus one. I believe that would work. I think this would work. And there it is. There's the longest of the reading frame. But another approach might be to sort in descending order, as I said before. And the way you could do that is by putting reverse equals true. And this basically is a another um, keyword that can go into sort the sort method, and there are others to specify, you know, how exactly to go about sorting, and sorting is, you know, that's a whole nother lecture, let's put it that way. So, but suffice to say, we can use a key and we can reverse it. I'm sorting in descending order, longest to shortest, and I'm returning the first element. And so, that gives us our longest open reading frame, and I'll see you next time.